Most people casually dismiss the North Korean government as either crazy or insane, even though its past decisions have caused widespread famine, resulted in an economic meltdown, and the personality cult surrounding Kim is nothing short of totalitarian, there is strategic thought behind the nuclear program. In fact, it may well be the most sensible thing in North Korea. My name is Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. Recent developments in the Korean Peninsula have revived fears over Pyongyang's nuclear and missile programs. Up until now, Washington has relied on additional sanctions and enhanced regional missile defenses to keep North Korea's nuclear ambitions in check. However, at the same time, President Trump has made it clear that he will keep all options open. Currently, the United States has three military options to disable North Korea's nuclear program. The first being a surgical strike or a cyber attack that is limited to a single object. The target may well be a facility or a base, but the goal is to deter Pyongyang from continuing to develop a nuclear arsenal. There is no guarantee that such a surgical strike will ease Pyongyang's nuclear and missile development, however targeting a single object offers the best way to keep the situation from escalating. Washington's second option is to conduct limited strikes that physically interrupt North Korea's programs. These attacks will focus solely on the country's missile and nuclear infrastructure, which signals that Washington is not trying to overthrow the North North Korean government. This kind of operation would send a clear message to Pyongyang to change the course of its programs, but it also has a much higher risk of full-scale retaliation. The final American option is a comprehensive military campaign that seeks to eliminate North Korea's retaliatory capabilities. This scenario would happen if Washington believes that Pyongyang is likely to launch a counterattack regardless. This option would disable the North Korean threat in the long term, but it also effectively guarantees a full-blown war in the Korean Peninsula. The general mood in Washington and other major Western capitals is in favor of a hardline approach. However, Trump's decision depends on the anticipated reaction from Kim's government. But only by looking at the problem from the other side's point of view can we make progress. So should Trump decide to carry out a military strike against Kim, the immediate impact would be devastating for Pyongyang. The truth is, North Korea is unable to prevent an American strike, but its retaliation capabilities are well within means. Pyongyang relies on its conventional military hardware to discourage the United States and its allies from taking military action against the North. The country has a wide range of short and medium range systems that can inflict enormous damage to large portions of South Korea, including its capital. So far, this status quo has maintained the balance of power in the peninsula. However, as the technological gap between Seoul and Pyongyang widens, many of the North Korean systems are increasingly obsolete, meaning North Korea is gradually losing its conventional deterrent. As Pyongyang's retaliation capabilities diminish over time, the ruling elite believes that it's only a matter of time until the Americans decide to strike. Therefore, to ensure the preservation of the government, the North Korean elite is working towards a national security that is based on asymmetric capabilities and weapons of mass destruction. As such, Kim's government has made tremendous investments to develop long-range ballistic missiles. The country has made progress towards long-range missile technology under the Taipodong-2 space launch program. But Pyongyang has also displayed two other long-range ballistic missiles, namely the Kn-08 and Kn-14, which it claims could reach North America. It's uncertain whether these claims are true, 
because these missiles have not yet been tested. However, what is certain is the capacity of the Musadal missiles, which are within striking capabilities of US air and naval bases in Guam, Okinawa, etc. In short, North Korea's conventional military is gradually becoming obsolete. Hence, Pyongyang looks to nuclear weapons and ballistic missile technologies to establish a new deterrent. In this context, by acquiring nuclear weapons, the government of Kim seeks to ensure its preservation. Recent geopolitical events have only increased Pyongyang's resolve. Looking back at the history of North Korea's nuclear weapons program, one can see the revival of Pyongyang's pursuit of ballistic and nuclear technology following the US invasion of Iraq and the subsequent dismantlement of the government of Saddam. Shortly following the American invasion of Iraq, Libya's ruler, Gaddafi, gave up on his entire weapons of mass destruction capacity. He opened up to international inspections and sought to normalize relations with the United States. Then the Arab Spring erupted in 2011. The government in Tunisia and Egypt were overthrown. In Libya, clashes between law enforcement agencies and opposition movements turned to violence. And as soon as the first shot was fired, Washington abandoned its agreement with Tripoli. Instead, the American leadership encouraged a revolt and intervened along with NATO to aid the Libyan rebels. The military intervention led to the capture and death of Gaddafi. Meanwhile, Libya fell into total chaos. Jihadist groups rose and subsequently it further destabilized the nations in the Sahil region. Nearly the same scenario unfolded in Iraq due to the downfall of Saddam's government. From North Korean perspective, the deaths of Saddam and Gaddafi validates that one should never give up on its nukes. Since 2011, Kim's government has not shown any shred of interest in the promises of favorable economic cooperation or guarantees of security. In fact, the death of Gaddafi was a wake-up call for the North Koreans. It strengthened their resolve. And to that end, Pyongyang quadrupled its nuclear program efforts and significantly increased missile testing. Currently, the North Korean elite believes that if unrest erupts in the country, having nuclear weapons will make the United States and its allies think twice before aiding rebels. It is for this reason that Pyongyang believes that nuclear weapons are vital to the survival of the government. To a certain extent, there is truth in this. The US government has a long record of overthrowing uncooperative foreign leaders, but none of them had nukes. North Korean officials have repeatedly mentioned that if Saddam or Gaddafi possessed weapons of mass destruction, they would still be alive and the United States would not have invaded their countries. But these examples are not just limited to the United States. In 1994, Ukraine agreed to remove the nuclear weapons it had inherited from the Soviet Union in exchange for security guarantees from Russia, the United States, and the United Kingdom. Yet, regardless of the Memorandum of Understanding, two decades later, Russia invaded and annexed Crimea. So the government in Pyongyang believes that when a nation has the strength to break or bend the rules, then it's likely to do so at some point in the future. And the only deterrence is nuclear weapons. For North Korean policymakers, there are simply no alternative options than the preservation of the state. Even if members of the elite were given passages to third countries, sooner or later the international tribunal in Hague would catch up on them. The truth of the matter is that for the North Korean elite, there is no escape and there are no viable alternative options. The country cannot open up to outside influence or seek unification with the South. The German unification shows that Western-backed governments will absorb the former communists. So unification too will lead to the collapse of the North's elite. Pyongyang understands that nuclear weapons do not guarantee the preservation of the government, but they also believe that their survival is even less secure without them. 
Thus far, the only exception to a successful negotiated nuclear exit was reached with the Iranians. However, what makes Iran such a unique case is their proximity to the Strait of Hormuz. This is one of the busiest sea passages in the world. An estimated 20% of the world's petroleum passes through the strait. Iran's conventional military has the capacity to impose an effective blockade of the passage, which would completely upset the global economy. So the Iranians perceive their options in the Strait of Hormuz as a deterrent. Therefore, the leadership in Tehran believes that it doesn't need nukes to ensure the preservation of the government. However, North Korea has no such bargaining chip. It also has no real governmental institutions, meaning Pyongyang is far more susceptible to regime change than Tehran. As of this writing, North Korea is nearing the final stage in which it can demonstrate each component of the nuclear weapons system. This is the most dangerous stage because it offers the American leadership a final chance to prevent North Korea from becoming a nuclear armed state. So the pressure to act is rising in Washington. And there is a lot at stake for everyone. The United States fears that North Korea is setting a dangerous precedent for other totalitarian governments. Meanwhile, the government in Pyongyang believes that self-preservation requires ballistic and nuclear technology. This was a Caspian Report by Mishirvan. Special thanks to our contributors on Patreon for suggesting this topic and for their financial support that helps to keep our channel independent and objective. If you want to be part of that process, visit patreon.com slash Caspian Report. In any case, thank you for watching and Saul.